in our birth chart, the Black Moon Lilith represents the part of us or the traits that we feel the most ashamed of, likely because in early childhood we were destined karmically with this placement to feel shame for embracing those things. Maybe we were judged. Maybe we were told by a parent or peer to not be like that. So now, as we have grown to be adults, we don't embrace our Black Moon Lilith, and we this keeps us from embracing our deepest powers because not only is Lilith the part of us we feel ashamed of, but it's also a place of power that once we embrace, we can live more empowered, confident lives. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything that you need to know about having your Black Moon Lilith in the sign of Cancer. Hello and welcome back to the Be The Hero channel. My name is Isabel and I help you understand who you are using personality typing and astrology because I was the kind of person who took way too long to understand themselves and this left me feeling often confused about my direction in life and lost. Then I discovered astrology, Enneagram, Myers-Briggs and so much more and for the first time in my life who I was made sense and I knew what direction I wanted to go. So now I'm here to teach you about these things so that you can understand them simply and enjoy the process of self-learning. Now, before I get too far into this video explaining what it means to have your Lilith in the sign of Cancer, hit the link in the description below to get your very own My Horoscope Made Me Do It hoodie. If you love astrology, you need to get yourself one of these hoodies now while I'm offering them in the link in the description below and then we can be matching. Oh my God, so cute. In this video, I'm breaking down what the Black Moon Lilith is in the sign of Cancer in your birth chart. But before I dive in to this specific aspect, some things you need to know about the Black Moon Lilith, which are probably already coming up as questions in your head as you're watching this video. Because these were questions I had myself when I started researching about my Lilith myself. I was getting confused because some people referred to it as Lilith and some people referred to it as Black Moon Lilith. And is there a difference? Am I supposed to be looking at one or the other? I'm gonna guess I'm supposed to be looking at Lilith since that's what it says in my chart. In your chart, a very popular aspect is referred to as just Lilith, but what you're looking for is the Black Moon Lilith, which is a point in your chart, not a planet. The Lilith uh, by itself is also an aspect of your chart, but not as commonly mentioned. So if you just looked at your chart and you saw that they are looking, uh, you there's an aspect called your Lilith, you are likely looking for information about the Black Moon Lilith, which I'm going to be talking about in this video. So keep watching. So the, what does Lilith represent in astrology? Some background behind Lilith. Lilith was the first wife of Adam, and I think this story explains very well what Lilith represents in our chart. So Lilith was the first wife of Adam, and she was known for being very powerful, very strong, competent woman, very great in many ways, had very great many powers, but she was not as passive as Adam liked her to be, and so she caused troubles. So what they did is they removed Lilith from the picture and replaced her with Eve. So Lilith was banished from Earth because she had such great powers that it made her maybe uncompromising and too hard to work with. So in our astrological birth chart, Lilith represents this very deep power within us. Depending on the sign that your Lilith is in will tell you what that power exactly is. But at some point or another along our life path, we felt that these powers were not welcome among the world and they would lead to us being abandoned or betrayed or banished. So now we repress these traits within ourselves. We feel heavily ashamed for them, guilty for embracing them. And anytime we see someone possessing these traits, we tend to feel a sense of jealousy or fear because you shouldn't act like that. That will lead to danger. So Lilith is a part of us that we feel heavily ashamed of but not do we feel only feel ashamed for it, but it's something we need to heal and embrace because it holds some of our greatest powers that can help us move through life, manifest with ease, and feel just a sense of feeling healed. So if you have been recently feeling like 
uh, senses of guilt or woundedness that you just can't heal, or if you feel like you're just missing out on areas of your life because you're not fully tapping into your truest potential, watch this video on to learn about what it means to have your Lilith in the sign of Cancer. So what is the Cancer archetype? Cancer is the fourth sign of the zodiac and it is the fourth or first water sign that we interact with. So think of the zodiac wheel as steps in a journey. We start off at Aries and this is where we first come into the world with confidence, courage, and frankly ignorance, but we are unafraid to just put ourselves out there and try our hardest. We truly just want to experience life to the fullest, so we charge life straight on and make mistakes. This is why Aries, Aries is stereotyped for being blunt, aggressive, bold, and brave, which are all very true traits of Aries. Then we go to Taurus where we learn to slow down and enjoy the senses, focus on some stability, and pace ourselves. From there, we move into Gemini where we experience curiosity for the very first time and ask ourselves, what is there to observe in reality? What can I learn? So after we've experienced all this stabilizing, curious and passionate energy, and we have reached a state of full balance and peace, we ask ourselves to look for a little more depth. And that's where we experience emotional nurturance for the first time through the sign of cancer. Cancer is known for being the archetype of motherly qualities and motherly love. It has to do with family, with roots, with self-protection as well. So in Cancer, we learn to say, I feel for the first time. We learn to pay attention to what we feel and we see value in making sure we feel emotionally safe at all times. As Cancer is represented by the crab, uh, people with strong cancer traits tend to move through life in what seems to be a very non-linear way because they are always acting uh, in alignment with their emotions and they're trying to make sure that they protect themselves at all costs. Think again of that crab with the hard shell exterior. Cancer's first priority is to protect the self and to make sure that they feel emotionally secure at all times. From there, they go to support other people and protect other people with the same level of defense that they've protected themselves. So what does it mean to have Black Moon Lilith in the sign of Cancer? So again, Lilith is the thing we feel most ashamed of. So people with Lilith in the sign of Cancer feel heavily guilty for any form of needing nurturing, for wanting to be cared for, for any forms of sensitivity. The first and foremost thing that comes to mind for me when I think of someone having a Lilith in Cancer is that you have strong mother wounds. It's possible that in childhood you were a soft and gentle person who was very giving and had a very big heart, but at some point or another you were taught that vulnerability is not valued and you must be strong and tough at all times and to need any form of nurturing or care is stupid and will lead to you being abandoned if you ask for it. Naturally, as human beings, we know that we all need to be cared for. We all need love. But for a Lilith in Cancer, this is a hard fact to accept because they are heavily programmed to believe in childhood that they're not supposed to want these things. So people with a Lilith in Cancer can have a really hard time accepting their emotions and accepting their emotional wounds that they may feel. They can very commonly uh, gaslight themselves for things that they felt wounded for in the past because it doesn't matter. Every, no, everyone's dealt with something worse than me and I'm not supposed to bring attention to my hurt. People with a Lilith in Cancer will avoid their vulnerabilities at all costs. And this leads them to trying to repress any forms of weakness, which could be emotional softness, sadness, and also love and consideration. People who have a Lilith in Cancer have a gift for making people feel accepted, making them feel nurtured, bringing a sense of love that no one else has ever made them feel before, for offering a level of support no one has ever offered others before. But these people, with all this giving gifts in the world, have been taught that they need to repress that and that is not valued. So now they are someone who feels extremely guilty any time that they demand that they feel they need emotional support and then they hide the fact that they want to give that emotional support to other people. These people can be very conflicted when it comes to giving and receiving gifts, giving and receiving help, or even just nurturance 
Uh, how are you today? People with a Lilith in Cancer feel immensely ashamed and guilty for any Cancerian traits. Not only is your Black Moon Lilith in a sign, but it's also in a house. So I highly recommend for people looking at their Lilith in Cancer to also notice what house it's in as well, because this will show you where you need a level of emotional nurturance and where you feel the most ashamed for needing that. It's also very important that people with a Lilith in Cancer look into their moon sign because generally the moon in Lilith, or sorry, the Lilith in Cancer struggles the most with allowing themselves to accept their emotions and accept what they need emotionally. And our moon sign in astrology, as I have covered in many, many videos, is quite possibly one of the most important aspects of our chart because it tells us what we need for emotional fulfillment and how we attain that. So if you have a Lilith in Cancer, go check out my series on the moon through the signs and find out what you need for emotional fulfillment because this will help you heal your relationship with your Lilith and embrace your deepest powers. And once again, what are your deepest powers? Your deepest powers are the fact that you are more giving, caring, and nurturing than anyone else. You have a childlike heart that just wants to spread love, of course, towards yourself first, and then give to other people. You have a gift for being in touch with what you need and what you want, but you've taught yourself to not accept those things and repress them because it's not valued to need or want anything in this world according to your beliefs and according to your Lilith. Our Lilith in our birth chart demands to be seen and used. And so if we do not embrace our Lilith in healthy ways, if we do not overcome our shame associated with our Lilith, we express Lilith's energy in negative ways. So how does this play out for Lilith and Cancer? At their best, Lilith and Cancer wants to accept every emotional need they have, fulfill them, demand them of other people, demand them of themselves, and then give to other people whatever it is that they emotionally need. But when they're at their worst and they're repressing the fact that they want and need these things, they will go about giving to other people, over giving and under giving in order to try to attain that sense of nurturance that they feel that they shouldn't want. So people with a Lilith and Cancer can swing the extreme of giving too much, giving to people, giving to the wrong people, people who they know are going to betray them and not reciprocate that love back to them and then withdraw into themselves and isolate themselves from the world so that they can avoid being hurt and tell themselves, slapping themselves on the wrist saying, I shouldn't have needed that, I shouldn't have done that. Basically, a Lilith and Cancer subconsciously sets themselves up for failure in their relationships seeking out people who they know are not going to reciprocate love and over giving to the point of exhaustion so that they can try to achieve what their Lilith wants, but they do so in this negative fashion. So what should Lilith and Cancer do to overcome this womb and step into their highest powers? Again, Lilith and Cancer is all about nurture and be nurtured. So the most important thing a Lilith and Cancer can do is start practicing emotional awareness spending time with yourself, nurturing your physical body, and allowing emotions to flow through you is going to be highly impactful for you. Uh, anywhere we have cancer in our chart, we tend to feel and want to have a healthy relationship with our negative emotions. Negative emotions become a very prominent area of our life. So allowing yourself to express sadness, whether that's through crying, screaming, shouting, letting that flow through you is going to be very important and oftentimes especially in like the mental health society we're taught to think positive thoughts and yes we should but you as a moon or lilith in cancer you need to embrace this negativity and allow it to flow through you so then you can embrace positivity to its best again lilith in cancer is not just about embracing and nurturing yourself it's about nurturing others. So step one for you, Lilith and Cancer, is to nurture yourself. Make yourself feel accepted and only allow people into your life who nurture and fulfill you and then give that love to the right people in return. Cancer aspects are very fulfilled by protecting and caring for other people. So allow yourself to care for other people. Listen to them. Give them gifts. Whatever calls to your soul, but only after you've taken care of yourself first. 
If this video helped you understand what it means to have your Lilith in the sign of Cancer, please let me know in the comments below and let me know what house your Lilith in Cancer is in as well. And I'll give you a little bit of information about what that means. If you want to learn more, if you want to go in depth, we can book a reading in the link in the description below. While you're down there leaving that comment, be sure to grab the free birth chart workbook that takes less than 15 minutes to do the entire thing, where I help you understand the basics of your chart using journal prompts. This is not just for the people new to astrology. I know if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking, I'm way beyond that. I don't need that. I already understand my sun, moon, and rising. These are journal prompts that I used years after discovering my birth chart and reading about every single aspect because I thought I understood it all because I read it all. I knew every single planet, every single asteroid, every single point, yada, 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 yada. And I did nothing with the information, frankly. So the birth chart workbook ha is free and it has all the journal prompts that I used to actually learn how to apply my birth chart to my life and live in alignment with my soul's unique energetic imprint. That's the free birth chart workbook in the link in the description below. Grab it now. If you love workbooks and courses, be sure to check out the Making Mindfulness Fun bundle where I have all 30 of our workbooks and courses for available for only $30. It's an insane deal, I know. That's $1 per course per workbook and that includes all of our astrology workbooks, all of our Enneagram workbooks, our chakra healing courses, and so much more. I'm about to add two brand new astrology workbooks to this bundle as well, and this is the only place you'll be able to access them. So check out the Making Mindfulness Fun bundle now. You can learn more and buy it now in the link in the description below, and you'll be the first to access those two new astrology workbooks coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos breaking down Lilith through the signs. Once again, my name is Isabel and from my heart to yours, namaste.